Welcome to tutorial 3 part 1 of the Performance Management Appraisal System PMAS. I am Constable Rashid Mogordon. And I am Corporal Sean J. Mitchell and we are your presenters. Having looked at the features of the Performance Management Appraisal System PMAS as discussed in tutorial 1 and the roles and responsibilities of the integral players discussed in our second tutorial, it is time to explore a very critical document used as a part of the process. The Policing Work Plan. In this tutorial, we will discuss the elements of the policing work plan. A policing work plan consists of three sections. One, a background. Two, situational analysis. And three, a work plan matrix of the formation for the period January 1 to December 31st of the year in question. Now, let us look at the sections in more detail. The background. The background should include the formation's mandate, profile, establishment, and any other relevant the situational analysis. The situational analysis is a systematic collection and evaluation of the environment to identify internal and external forces that can influence the performance and selection of strategies. For geographic divisions including stations, the analysis must include 1. A crime overview, that is, what are the crime trends in the policing area? 2. Intelligence analysis. That is, what are your intelligence sources and how does it impact your policing strategies? 3. Hotspot analysis. That is, what are the major areas of concern in your policing area? 4. SWOT analysis. That is, what are your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats imminent in your division? 5. Stakeholder analysis. That is, who are the major players and our partners in developing, implementing, and sustaining policing initiatives in your area. 6. Pestle analysis. That is, how do political, economic, social, technological, environmental, and legal factors impact on policing your area? Note, not all these factors will apply to you. For some formations, a hotspot analysis, crime and intelligence analysis, may not be applicable based on the formation's mandate. Now let us take a look at the main content of the policing work plan. The work plan matrix outlines specific objectives and the targets, tasks or activities that are required to achieve these objectives within a specified time frame measured by key performance indicators. The work plan matrix consists of 1. JCS strategic priorities 2. The objectives 3. Targets 4. Performance indicators 5. Activities or major tasks and 6. Expected outcomes In the development of the work plan matrix, the formation must conduct a situational analysis, as discussed earlier. Based on the strategic priorities, you will develop objectives that will address issues that arise from the situation's analysis. SMART targets are developed for each objective. You would recall that acronym SMART means that targets must be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. Key performance indicators are tracked to determine the achievement of the established targets, and for each objective, actionable strategies and activities are developed. Strategies and activities are then developed based on a situational analysis in order to achieve the objective and set the targets for those objectives. Expected outcomes are changes in the environment or situation that can come about if your objectives and targets are achieved. Now let us take a look at each element of the matrix in more detail. The strategic priorities are major areas of focus that the JCF intends to pay special attention to. You would recall that the nine strategic priorities are 1. The reduction of crime, especially murders. 2. The restoration of public safety and confidence. 3. The upholding of human rights. 4. The boosting of morale and confidence of members of the JCF and its auxiliaries. 5. The effective confrontation of corruption among members of the JCF and its auxiliaries. 6. Effective internal and external communication. 7. Strengthening administrative and human resource capacity. 8. Improvement in management efficiency and resource utilization and 9. Improvement in intelligence management and delivery systems. 
Now, the work plan matrix is a guide of what the formation intends to achieve as its contribution to achieving strategic priorities. For the purpose of this tutorial, the work plan applies to branches, divisions, formations, units and stations of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. There will be a number of issues to be addressed that may be considered unique to an area, branch, division or station. To address these issues, you will need to draft what are called objectives. Objectives are aligned to the strategic priorities of the Jamaica Constabulary Force and seek to address the unique issues facing the respective areas, branches, divisions, sections and formations. They provide a broad picture of a desired goal to be attained. Let us look at the strategic priority, reduction of crime, especially murders for example. If your station is experiencing an increase in a particular crime, one of your objectives could be to have a reduction in that specific category or group of crime. Hence the objective, reduction in serious and violent crimes, especially robberies and shootings. Now let's say your division has a problem with an active criminal gang in the area. You may set an objective, dismantling and disruption of major gangs, especially Big Yard, Hilltop and Red Square gangs. Let us take a look at the third strategic priority upholding human rights. You could consider the objectives, improve the awareness of members on matters concerning human rights, and enhance the capacity of members in the use of less lethal force. Point to note, if there are no issues to address, for example, what can we do better? How can we fix the problem? How can we improve on what we are currently doing or maintain what we are achieving? you will find it is very challenging to draft an objective. Having drafted our possible objectives, this brings us to our target. A target is a measurable performance or success level that an organization plans to achieve within a specified time period. It could be seen as those incremental elements that will be used to attain your objectives. Targets can either be quantitative or qualitative and must be written bearing the acronym SMART in mind. Now, recall our first objective. Reduction in serious and violent crimes, especially robberies and shootings. A few possible targets could include, one, 15% reduction or six less robbers by December 31st, 2014. Two, 20% reduction or 25 less shootings by the 31st of the 12th, 2014. Three, 20% increase or one more VCP per day effective the 1st of January 2014. And four, database management system implemented by the 31st of March 2014. As it relates to the objectives derived from the strategic priority of upholding human rights, some targets could include one, conduct quarterly seminars on use of force and police public interaction policies by December 31st, 2014, and 2. 100% of operational staff train application of pepper spray and other less lethal devices by the 30th of June, 2014. Point to note, the targets will not make sense if they are not smart. This brings us to our performance indicators. A performance indicator refers to a range of statistical parameters representing a measure of the extent to which an institution or a program is performing in a certain quality dimension. It is a qualitative and quantitative measure of the output or outcome of a system or of a program. It is a benchmark against which an actual performance is measured. That is, what will I be watching? Now can you recall the targets that we have set for robberies, shootings and VCPs? We may want to watch or keep track of 1. The number of robberies reported 2. The number of shootings reported 3. The number of vehicular checkpoints conducted and 4. We may also want to look at the clear-up rate for robberies and shootings. Recall the target set regarding upholding human rights. You will need to track 1. Number of seminars held 2. Number of members exposed to training and three, number of operational staff trained. Point to note, there can be several indicators to one target. The performance indicator tells if you are getting the job done. Now, how will you achieve these targets? 
This takes us to the activities or major tasks. This refers to the actions which are necessary to transform given inputs into planned outputs. There are tasks that must be accomplished in order to reach your target. In constructing your work plan, activities must begin with a verb and must be directly related to your targets you have set. Let's take the targets mentioned earlier. We would want to consider a few activities that would help us to achieve these targets. It is also important to note that these activities will be transferred to the individual work plan for execution as major tasks. These activities for the strategic priority reduction of crime would include 1. Organizing and executing operational activities throughout the division. These include mobile patrol, foot patrol, and PCPs. 2. Organizing and conducting VCPs. 3. Monitoring crime statistics and 4. Collaborating with Mobile Reserve and Motorized Patrol Division to conduct operational activities. The activities for the strategic priority upholding human rights could include 1. Organizing and facilitating human rights seminars. 2. Collaborating with various human rights interest groups to conduct seminars. 3. Organizing and facilitating training of members in less lethal equipment. 4. Collaborating with Firearm Tactics and Training Unit FTTU to conduct training exercises and 5. Creating a training schedule. Point to note, all activities are to be directly aligned to the targets and not to the strategic priority. This takes us to expected outcomes. Expected outcomes are a result of planned activities aimed at achieving set objectives and targets in line with stated performance indicators. If you were to achieve a target set for reducing murders earlier, it is likely to result in 1. Reduction in the fear of crime 2. Safer communities And likewise, for upholding human rights, it would result in 1. Increased confidence of citizens in the police 2. Less complaints of human rights abuse by members of the force. Now let us look at another strategic priority. How well can you design your work plan from the strategic priority? Restoration of public safety and confidence. Just in case you need some help, let us do it together. In restoring public safety and confidence, you may find a gap in the level and quality of communication between the citizens and the police. To address this issue, you may want to set an objective Enhance police citizen interaction. Corresponding targets to this objective would include 5% increase or two more neighborhood watch groups resuscitated by December 31st, 2014. The same could be said about the police youth club. The performance indicator would be the number of neighborhood watches or police youth clubs resuscitated. The corresponding activities would include conducting meetings and liaising with community members and stakeholders to organize and conduct these meetings. As a result of achieving the set targets, it is likely that your expected outcomes could be greater police or citizen collaboration, improved image of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and enhanced citizen awareness. This takes us to the end of another PMAS tutorial. We hope you are better equipped to develop your policing work plan. Please feel free to make your queries by contacting the Research Planning and Legal Services Branch, RPLSB, at 908-4487 or 908-4744 or send an email to rplsb.ppmu at jcf.gov.jm. Representatives are waiting to assist you. Thanks for watching and join us for part two of this tutorial as we take a look at developing your individual work plans. I am Constable Rashima Gordon. And I am Corporal Sean J. Mitchell.